Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. So we finally got the news we have been waiting for. So last night, if you guys were on my social media, because I was kind of up late last night working on some stuff, and news had broke that basically there would be a news conference today um, from the media and that the police would be letting us know more information concerning the Carly Russell situation. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch last night's breaking news that I had posted on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Check this out. And that breaking news, Hoover police getting an update in the Carly Russell disappearance. In the last hour, we've learned the department will hold a press conference tomorrow afternoon. WVTM 13's Aaron Llewellyn joining us now with the latest. Uh, This story has captivated the nation, Aaron. Yes, guys, Sherry, since Carly Russell reported a toddler walking on I-459, there have been several questions about what happened leading up to and during the 49 hours that she was missing. Now, let's take a look at that timeline. Carly called 911 to report what she saw on the highway. But when police arrived, all they could find was her her wig, her phone and her Apple Watch and her car. This led to a multi-search for Carly in a massive social media campaign that ended with her walking to her parents' house late Saturday night. Hoover police have also released new facts from the investigation, the biggest one being that police did not have any evidence that a toddler was walking down the interstate and no calls were made to police about seeing the child. And after leaving work Thursday, Carly stopped at a nearby Target to get some snacks, but they were not found in her car. Detectives also have video from Carly's neighborhood, which shows her walking down the sidewalk alone prior to her getting to her house on Saturday night. When first responders got there, they found Russell conscious and speaking, and she was transported in that condition. She was later treated and released from a local hospital. Now, again, Hoover police will have a press conference where we can expect them to release more details about what happened that night. That press conference is expected to start at 2.30, and we will bring that to you on air and online. So you guys just saw that video. Um, So today... The Hoover Police Department, they finally came out. They basically told us everything that we've been waiting to hear concerning the whole Carly Russell situation. And it looks like we have another, you know, Joanne the Scammer, a.k.a. Carly Smollett situation on our hands. The memes are being pumped out. People are currently dragging her. This entire situation is crazy. Um, On top of the police talking, and I'll show you that video in a second, there were also searches done on her computer. And those searches include you had to pay for an Amber Alert search, how to take money from a register without being caught, Birmingham bus, Birmingham bus station, one-way bus ticket from Birmingham to Nashville, the movie Taken, information about Amber Alerts on her work computer, and other searches that the police reveal her mindset, but they said they're not going to release that information. They also checked surveillance footage at her job. She was currently working at a spa, and it showed that she concealed a bathrobe and toilet paper when she left, and neither of those items were in the car when she went missing. Soon after that, she called 911, and data tracked that she drove 600 yards while saying that she was following a toddler along the interstate. According to Hoover Police Chief, um, that distance was six football fields, And there's no way a child would have been walking that far where nobody else saw this child or reported it to the police. So I want you guys to go ahead and listen to the news conference. Go ahead and check this out, and I will come back with the rest of my commentary. Okay. And was the child on the left or right side? On the right side. Were they walking north or south now? Um, they're walking towards South Lucia. <coughs> walking South Mount. Uh, how old do they look? Um, like a toddler? Like maybe like three or four? Did you pull out her with them? Are you still with them? Yes. Okay, you're, are you with the child right now? No, I'm not. I didn't get out of the car. I'm just, I, I can see them though. Can you, do you mind 
stay and keep an eye on them until we get there? Yeah. Yeah, sure, yeah. yeah. Okay, what kind of car are you in? I'm in a red Mercedes Benz. And then a sedan or SUV? SUV. I mean, it's a, a, a sedan. Sorry. Can you put your hazards on for me? Yeah, they're on. Okay. Did you talk to each other or did you say anything to them? No. Okay. No. Do they look like they're injured? No, they don't. Are they white, black, Hispanic, or Asian? They're white. Okay. And the male or female? I think it's a boy, a little boy. Right now? Okay. So are you wearing clothes? Yes. Okay. What are you wearing? Um, it's a white t-shirt. It doesn't look like you have any pants on. It looks like a diaper. And you don't see any cars anywhere? No, no cars anywhere. Okay. All right. What's your name? My name is Harvey Russell. And you don't see any injuries on the shop from where you're at, correct? No, no, but I can't really see them that good. Okay, try to keep an eye on them for the best that you can because I don't want you to lose track of them. Um, okay. All right, and do they have shoes on? No. Are shoes? Not that I can see. I can't really see that one. Okay. All right, I've got them on the way, okay? Just try to stay, keep an eye on them. Officers are on the way, okay? Okay, thank you. In the time frame, Carly's 911 call remains the only report of a child on the interstate, despite numerous vehicles passing through the area at that time. No one has called to report that a child is missing, and the Hoover Police Department did not locate any evidence of a small child walking down the interstate. Data from Carly's phone, including her Life 360 app, shows that she traveled approximately 600 yards in her vehicle while she was on the phone with 911 stating that she was following a child. 600 yards, that is six football fields straight, 600 yards. The Hoover 911 Center received a second call from Cardi's mother stating that a relative was on the phone with her when they heard Cardi scream and then they had an open phone line. Hoover police officers arrived on the scene within five minutes of being dispatched, and several other officers arrived shortly. They located Carly's wig and cell phone in the grass near the vehicle. Her purse was located in the front seat of her vehicle with her Apple uh, watch in the purse. The food she ordered for Tzatziki's was also in the car. The items she purchased from Target, as well as the items taken from her place of employment, were not in the vehicle, nor were they located anywhere around the scene. Hoover police deployed all available assets from the point in the search for Carly. Additional resources were called in to include our own drone unit, crime scene investigators, numerous detectives responded to the scene. Throughout the day Friday, officers from surrounded local and federal agencies assisted Hoover police in the search for Carly Russell. Officers returned to the scene on 459 to conduct a thorough line search for evidence. K-9 teams from the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department responded to check for any sign of Carly, the child that she claimed to see, and anything else that could be considered evidence in this case. Those searches all turned up empty. Private citizens, including search parties organized by our family, friends, began looking everywhere that they could to find any trace. These searches took place throughout the day Friday and again on Saturday, yielding nothing. At 10.44 p.m. on July 15th, the Hoover 911 center receives a call from Carly's residence stating that she returned home on foot. In subsequent investigations, detectives obtained surveillance footage of Carly walking down the sidewalk alone prior to arrival at her residence. She was conscious and speaking with paramedics when she was transported to UAB. Detectives were able to obtain a brief statement from her prior to being treated and released. During the statement, she told detectives that while traveling down the interstate, she saw a baby walking down the side of the road and called 911. She stuttered when she got out of her vehicle to check on the child, a man came out of the trees and mumbled that he was checking on the baby. She claimed that the man then picked her up and she screamed. She stated he then made her go over a fence. She claims he then forced her into a car and the next thing she remembers is being in the trailer of an 18-wheeler. She stated that the male was with a female 
However, she never saw the female, only hearing her voice. She also told detectives she could hear a baby crying. She told detectives the male had orange hair with a big bald spot on the back. She said she was able to escape the 18-wheeler and fled on foot, only to be captured again, and then was put in a car. She claimed she was then blindfolded, but was not tied up because the captor said they did not want to leave impressions on her wrists. She said that they took her into a house and made her get undressed. She believes they took pictures of her, but she does not remember them having any physical or sexual contact. She stated the next day she woke up and was fed cheese crackers by the female. She said the woman also played with her hair, but could not remember anything else. At some point, she was put back in a vehicle she claims was able to escape while it was in the West Hoover area. She told detectives she ran through lots of woods until she came out near her residence. During this interview, detectives noted that Carly had a small injury to her lip, and she claimed that her head was hurting. She also had a tear on her shirt. Detectives also noted that she had $107 cash in her right sock. Out of respect for Carly and her family, detectives did not press for additional information in this interview and made plans to speak with her in detail after giving her time to rest. Detectives continue analyzing data from Carly's cell phone that was left behind at the scene. We enlisted the help of the United States Secret Service in conducting this analysis. Part of what data includes several internet searches in the days leading up to their disappearance that I think are rele very relevant to this case. On July 11th at 7.30 a.m., the term, do you have to pay for an amber alert was searched. On July 13th at 1.03 a.m., the day of her disappearance, the term, how to take money from a register without being caught was searched. On July 13th at 2.13 a.m., the day of her disappearance, the term Birmingham bus station was searched. On July 13th, 2.35 a.m., a search for a one-way bus ticket from Birmingham to Nashville was conducted with a departure date of July 13th. On July 13th at 12.10 p.m., a search for the movie Taken, a film about a production, was conducted. There were two searches related to Amber Alerts on a computer at Carly's place of employment, including one regarding the maximum age of an Amber Alert. There were other searches on Carly's phone that appeared to shed some light on her mindset, but out of respect for her privacy, we will not be releasing the content of those searches at this time. We've asked to interview Carly a second time, but have not been granted that request. As you can see, there are many questions left to be answered, but only Carly can provide those answers. What we can say is that we've been unable to verify most of Carly's initial statement made to investigators, and we have no reason to believe that there is a threat to the public safety related. All right, so you guys just saw the news conference. So this entire situation, all right, so you guys just saw the news conference. You guys also heard the 911 call. This entire situation is just extremely disturbing. Now, I will say this. Um, yesterday, I stated that, you know, her parents' body language, especially her father's, you could tell he was very uncomfortable. I don't want to say that her parents were in on it. I don't think they were. I think this was all on Carly. Um, but I think her parents got caught up in it because they knew that their daughter was lying, but they didn't know how to face the public because they were genuinely concerned for her. They were genuinely worried for her. Now, come to find out the so-called brother that went viral, he was not related to her. He was an attention seeker on social media looking to attach himself to the story. But um, so I, I, I want to give the parents a little bit of grace because I don't think they knew the full extent of this. I think they're finding out along with the police, you know, and they don't want to just throw their daughter to the wind. But this Carly situation is disturbing for many reasons. One, we already have issues, real life issues with black women 
and women of color who go missing, who do not get the national attention that they deserve when they go missing. A third of the almost 300,000 girls and women reported missing in the U.S. in 2020 were black. That is according to the National Crime Information Center. And yet those cases often get little attention or are all but ignored by law enforcement and national news media. Now, a four-part documentary series on HBO follows the lives of two women working to bring awareness to these we started this documentary process about three years ago because we found the work that they were doing just fascinating. You were hearing from Derricka talking about being in law enforcement and trying to use her expertise to help families who have missing loved ones who can't figure out how to break through the barrier of disinterest in a lot of cases where no one seems to actually really care enough about the person who's missing that they go the extra mile or maybe just go the basic mile to make sure that there is a missing person's flyer, that it's circulated in areas outside of just that one jurisdiction. How many missing kids posters do we see at Walmart? Have you seen me? You know, they don't get the national attention. So the fact that this woman's story went viral and to find out that everything is fake is just extremely disheartening because she wasted resources that could have went to a real victim. She wasted people's time, energy, the emotions. People donated money to go search for her. And she did all this, you know, allegedly from what the streets are saying to get back at her boyfriend. I don't know how much of that is true, but either way, we do know that she fake this. This entire situation was faked for attention. And another thing that's extremely disturbing is how many people just sit here and just make up lies, race bait, want to go back and forth simply because this is a black woman. Because this is a black woman, she shouldn't be held accountable. Nobody should question anything. All of a sudden, so many people on social media have psychiatrist degrees, and they're saying, oh, she had a psychotic break. She might have had a mental breakdown. When people have mental breakdowns, you know, all you bootleg psychiatrists there on Twitter, understand when you have a mental breakdown, it happens instantly. You usually just break down right there and then. There's no way to control it. You can't have a mental breakdown while calling 911 and playing games that you're seeing a toddler on the freeway and then turning around and calling your, you know, your boyfriend's sister. The whole situation is just disgusting. All the excuses that I'm seeing people making up for her um, because they don't want to hold her accountable simply because she's a black woman. We even had one Yahoo come on to Instagram last night and basically just basically perpetuate a bunch of lies. This woman said, I've never seen any white woman's narrative nationally investigated for holes. She could have had a psychotic breakdown. Who cares? She's home and safe. And of course, she had 142 idiots who also liked her comment. So I came on there and I replied back to her and I said, shake my head. So you're going to really act like Susan Smith, Jennifer Wilbanks, Sherry Papini, and as recently as in 2020, Katie Sorison, who was found guilty of lying about her kidnapping, never existed. Stop the nonsense. There have been multiple white women whose stories were caught out on social media and thoroughly investigated. And some also ended up in prison for their lies as well. So I guess if you were actually missing, no one should give a damn because someone black decided to lie and take resources from you being potentially located. Y'all be on social media regurgitating all types of fake woke nonsense and got the nerve to be loud and wrong. And this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a bunch of just race baiting people who have all these excuses, everything's about racism, they're only digging into the story because she's black. No, they're digging into the story because your friend, instead of her just disappearing, if that's what she wanted to do, she was seeking attention. She decided to pour sauce in the stew, okay? She decided to add extra sauce that was not needed and pick up the phone and call 911 and say that she saw a toddler. Once she added the extra sauce, which was the baby, that's the perfect recipe for a viral story because then at that point we have a missing child, which many people are concerned about children. We live in a world where human trafficking is very real. You have people who do use children to bait people and kidnap them. You have people who dip things in chemicals and put them on door handles to kidnap people. So none of this stuff is far-fetched, okay? 
She decided to add sauce to the story. That is why it became a national sensation. It wasn't a national sensation simply because she was a black woman missing. It became a national sensation because they were also looking for a toddler on the side of the road, okay? So for you guys to sit here and make all these excuses and act like people don't have the right to know the truth, act like the people in that community who were worried. There are people who were emailing and DMing me saying that they stayed in their home all weekend. They were scared to go out. They kept their children home because they didn't know if there was a, a kidnapper out there. They didn't know what was going on. Resources were poured into her. One of the women who led the search, her daughter ended up getting missing years ago, and they found her daughter dead. She's the woman who led the search for this woman, Carly. So most of you know I led the search for Carly Russell because when I got the call Monday, I'm sorry, Monday, it's today's Monday. You have to forgive me. I'm sick. I don't feel good. Um, on Friday morning, went immediately because I was asked to go and did not hesitate. The family asked me if I would lead um, the command center and search. And I said, absolutely. Um, and Anaya's heart and um, Vet Dirty and um, so many other people, um, hundreds of people, you know, came out to look for Carly. Um, we did what we we are supposed to do. What happened? That one, one, two days your child's missing and then you have your child back. That is so overwhelming. I can't even tell you how I've broke down. I have broke down. I am so thankful no matter what that she's alive because a lot of people put their heart and soul into Carly coming home and she's home. And to me, that's all that matters right right now. Your life. I hope it helps you understand that, yes, we're in danger. It doesn't matter about that this, this one very important situation. Um, it matters that you are aware. It matters that you are aware of what's out here in the world. So the excuses that I'm seeing online to further perpetuate her nonsense is just ridiculous. It's sad. I don't care if Carly is black, white, native, Latino, or Asian. Wrong is wrong. Right is right. Point blank, period. And she's all the way wrong in this situation. If she wanted to disappear and leave her surroundings and, and leave her family worried, that is on her. She could have quietly did that. Instead, she chose to include other people into her lives who believed her, who then took it to social media. And social media did the right thing. They rallied around this story. People like myself, my mom, and so many people were genuinely concerned. We prayed for her. We wanted her to come back safe and sound, which thank God she did. But the fact that she lied, that is a whole nother issue. And that is the part that's troublesome. You have too many people out here who are looking for attention and willing to seek attention by any means necessary. And it's really sad. And then you have a bunch of yahoos who sit here and who want to race bait and make excuses because for no other reason than the fact that she's black. Because trust me, if this was a white woman, this lady who left this comment, she wouldn't have had the same energy. That white woman would have been all types of Karens. She would have wanted her in jail. She wouldn't have been talking about a mental evaluation or I'm safe that this white woman's home. She wouldn't have gave two shits if that was a white woman who lied and who wasted resources, you know what I'm saying, to find her. She would have been dragging that white woman. But because it's a black woman, now you have all these excuses being made. I find this whole situation disgusting. I am personally over this whole Carly Russell situation. Go get some counsel. Go get some mental health help, okay? And you better hope that the Hoover Police Department don't end up charging you. And if they don't charge you criminally, you better hope they don't slap you with a fat fine for lying and wasting resources. So this entire situation is crazy, but I leave the comments up to you guys. How do you guys feel about this situation? How do you guys feel about all these race baiters who are up here making excuses for this situation? And what do you think will happen next to Carly Russell? Do you think she'll be charged criminally? Do you think she'll be charged financially for this? Um, I just want to know y'all's thoughts. I look forward to reading y'all's comments down below. Don't forget to like and share the video, and I will talk to y'all later. Deuces.
If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.